how to make money fast as a young woman. Well, I was a young woman. I was 17 years old and I started my first personal training business. Why? Because I had to supplement going to a private school. So didn't have enough money or enough scholarships. So everybody, my friends were getting jobs. I'm like, a job? And that day and age, like in 83, I'm like, you're getting what? I don't even remember, five, six, eight bucks an hour. I'm like, uh, no. Always in the gym, always an athlete. Saw people walking around and said, how much do those people, what are they doing, first of all? And they said, that's personal training. It's over, it's a new thing. How much do they make? 40 an hour with a client. I said, I'm a personal trainer today. That's how fast that one started. So as a young woman, you can make money. You have to decide you want it and lean in and say, I want to be an entrepreneur and not an employee. So I did everything in my power to not become an employee and became an employee for a minute with Chevron because I couldn't afford the helicopter insurance. Long story, you can look it up. So how do you make money, you, as a young woman? Well, first of all, you have to kind of embrace the whole attitude of being an entrepreneur, which at 17, 18, 19, as a young woman, even in your young 20s, you're probably going against the grain. Most people, why well, call it women or men, are being groomed to go get a job. That's what colleges do. They groom you to get a job. My son has a finance and accounting bachelor's degree, a master's in accounting, and they groomed him to be a CPA, which is a job. Now, he could have his own practice later, but you still got to go through that path. So sometimes you just got to go through the path. But a lot of you, do you really need to? We're also going to talk about the importance of mentorship and proactive steps because you're going to have to lean in and be mentored. I've been mentoring since I was 17 every year. I've spent money on a mentor, money and time, travel expense, the whole thing. It's what helps you grow faster, avoid costly errors, and speed up your process. The last thing I want to talk about is master the art of negotiation and sales because women aren't taught that. I say people aren't taught that. You're going to have to learn to sell and you're going to have to learn the components of being this entrepreneur. So get a pen and paper. Ladies, we have a lot to talk about. And specifically, I'm going to speak about women making less than men, because I believe that's a choice and it's a lack of a couple skill sets. We'll get to that. So when you embrace your energy and attitude for success, what a lot of young women people do is just say, well, I'm too young. I'm too this. You buy into all of that. So I want you to learn and really take on the act as if principle. Act as if you're the millionaire. You know, when I started the Rich Dad, Poor Dad brand and I left Chevron in my exercise physiology world and jumped into this world, World, I went, first of all, to work for a company that I wanted to create myself. And I stayed there for almost five years. And I learned everything from marketing, sales, cash flow, fulfillment, operations, technology, how to build the team, how to build the systems around this kind of a business and organization. Because you don't really go to school to be a best-selling author and a world-leading stage speaker and understand all this. It's like, there's not a, a job title that, you know, you go to a university for, so you have to use mentors to get there. So I use the organization of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Sharon Lecter is still one of my best friends and mentors. I call her my financial mom. And I embrace this act as if because here I am teaching the cash flow game and people are like, well, are you a millionaire young lady? And I'd be no, but I'm going to be one. You can either come with me and become a millionaire with me or stay behind. And boy, I just built a database with between those years, I built 18,000 people consistently following me. And that's like right around the time before social media was really kind of cranking in and doing anything. Who are you and what do you really want? So drop the, I'm just a beginner and I'm going to ask for less money because if you're a skill set, set at, I don't care how old you are, if you're 13, 14, 17, 22, 28, at that point I was in my late 20s, I was better than most people, especially in teaching, because I was very much taught adult learning theory early in my career by another mentor. So I knew how to teach better. I was applying the knowledge better. I didn't care that I was 10, 20 years younger than some of the gurus out there. I charged what they charged and I brought my prices up pretty quickly. So you've got to get in the right circles of people. The other thing too, for all young women, find what I call model companies. Somebody that you want to be like. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was that to me. And then I went on and Bob Proctor, Nightingale Conan was the product side. I understood the product side, right? And then I learned a whole bunch from Jim Rohn's organization and John Maxwell's organization about infomercials and branding. So I just kept spreading out to mentors and people who were doing what I wanted to do. And how could you learn to do it better? So if you're like, well, I can't spend any money, you're spending it on tuition. I mean, most of you, you're either getting scholarships or you're paying for college or your parents have a college fund put away for you. And if they don't, you go to them and say, you know, what? I don't want to do it that way. I want to just hire Laurel and her team to teach me how to do more of what I know how to do, whatever you want to do, whether it's real estate, I can help you do any of these categories. I'm a millionaire in eight industries about to be nine. So you can do this young ladies, but you got to get that attitude and not ask for permission. I'm not saying being rude and snotty and cocky about it, but you're not asking people, can I do this? You're doing it right. Huge attitude shift. This next thing I want to talk about just the importance of mentoring and having proactive steps. So really you need to be on this channel. So let's just 
to do that right now. I need you to subscribe to the channel, click that notification button. I need you here five days a week. I need you to get my learning journal, write down what you're learning, what you're doing about it, and lean further in. I love mentoring younger women who want to come up because there's so few of us that actually have mentors. When I came up in this whole space, I mean, Sharon was like the only one, but she wasn't a formal mentor. She was, you know, somebody that I was in relationship doing business with. There are so few women who raise their hand to younger women and say, let me guide you, teach you the real ropes. Not like some program, but a lifestyle of getting incorporated, making sure you do it right. Make sure you get your bank accounts right. Use your credit and use your credit scores right. I mean, you women are amazing. You just have to be taught. So mentoring and learning, just really becoming financially and business knowledgeable is something you have to want. When I first got into this, I consumed over probably a thousand personal development books. I have boxes and boxes and boxes after I moved out of our conference center of books of everything, of which my daughter's now 17 and starting to go through them. And that is a huge commitment of both of my kids to be deeply reading in this space this year. So getting mentored is critical. Love to help you. You women at any point, if you say, well, I can't afford it right now, well, go make some money. I'll give you two tickets to my millionaire intensive. They're in the description below. Come and learn how do you start your first offer? Like I didn't know how to give an offer in personal training. I just kind of borrowed what I was seeing around me. And then I increased my rates and increased my rates. And I moved over to corporate structure and built corporate centers. Did anybody teach me? Yeah, I went to the Cooper Clinic. I went to Dallas, Texas. And again, got a mentor and a coach said, how do you build corporate wellness centers? They taught me how to do it. I went back to Nebraska and I did it. So a lot of you, you're going to be doing things that are going to feel completely out of your comfort zone. Your parents probably aren't going to support you because they'll be like, you're crazy. You should just go get a job. No, go live your dream. Go be wealthy. Do what you want to do. Build what you want because you can. When you think about how important, you know, money is to women in general, I would say I have this like program I first started because here's what I see at the end of women's life, not the beginning. It's called the man is not a plan. Women will outlive their man if they're the same age when they grow together and get older. They will outlive eight to 13 years. Men usually die married. Women die divorced or widowed. So women, you got to organize yourself around business and finance and understand it. The man is not a plan isn't some snarky program. It came out of women truly not knowing when their husband died, where to find the life insurance policy. They didn't know anything about the trust. They didn't know anything about their taxes. They had no idea where the stock certificates were or where the deeds were to the properties. And then their lawyer and accountant just sold it all off, created a huge tax burden, and these women lost their homes. So I do that with a lot of passion and concern. You have got to lean in and learn money and don't just get an MRS degree because you think some guy is going to take care of you. Men are amazing. love them. And I have made my own way my entire journey because I choose to and I want to be independent financially. You can too. Love and money have nothing to do with each other, my women. Now, before we go to the third point, which is really important, I need you again. If you haven't subscribed, get to it. If there's topics you want me to talk about, put it in the comment section. And again, go to AskLowell.com and ask questions, make requests. I'm here all the time to support you. So the last point is how do you negotiate? How do you learn to sell? And how do you assure you're not like earning less than others? So let's just get the whole men topic out of the way. A lot of you, that is the narrative. On Independent Women's Day, I'm the one that usually goes on camera to the, all the media stations and they'll say, how do you feel about women having so and so percent below men? I said, they do that because they don't know how to negotiate and they don't ask for it. You can and should be making the same as your male counterparts. I have made more than my male counterparts. I usually surpass, I've surpassed a lot of my financial mentors financially, in business, in success, in influence, because I just, I have a very different drive. And my drive is based on the fact that I have a gift and I'm my job is to share it with the world. It's to teach you a conversation about money. So don't take that little hook and say, well, women get paid less. No, they don't. And if they do, it's because they're not negotiating and they don't ask. Let me give you some statistics. And women, I need you to hold your value and your worth and know that you're worth it and what you're providing in a product or service to the world is needed desperately. Here's some interesting statistics. The global average of women, they earn about 77 cents for every dollar earned by men that work of equal value. That is the International Labor Board. Doesn't have to be that way, so change it. In the United States in 2022, women earned approximately 82% of what men earned on a medium weekly average salary and scale. U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Sector differences. I mean, the gender pay gap is pronounced in several industries. Finance and technology is significant around men getting paid more versus sectors like education and healthcare. And again, negotiate and ask for what you worth and you deserve it. Our age and experience, again, women that are younger don't ask for the money that they deserve. I've been coaching my daughter as she took babysitting jobs, for example, and I said, first of all, call yourself a nanny, you'll make more money. And if they leave you with an animal or they leave you with a house to clean, that is not your job. They hired you to babysit. So as a nanny, you could offer more services and go up from, say, 15 an hour to 20 and 25 an hour as a 16 and 
17 year old girl. So a lot of you, you've got to understand this entrepreneurial price structure. Just because you're younger doesn't mean you're paid less. Just because you're younger doesn't mean that you can't do the same quality. Now, if you truly don't do the quality, again, get with a mentor, get with a more model organization and be taught a lot of this. This isn't difficult. It's just different than you've been taught. And you probably have inherited behaviors from your parents about who you're supposed to be in the role of a family. So I have been a huge money earner in my family and I hire home help. And that's nothing less than the woman I hire is amazing. She has her own company. So my company hires her company. And it's not like a less than job. It's just not one that I'm going to do because my hourly rate is way too high than vacuuming and cleaning a house. And I sure in the heck hate getting groceries. It's not like I don't pick up a few things here and there, but y'all don't need to be cleaning your house. You don't need to be getting groceries. And quite frankly, most of the time driving your kids around between sports events and stuff, you can hire that too. I've hired all of those things. I actually make it to the sports event, but I don't need to go to every practice. I don't need to do the driving and get stuck in traffic. You don't either. So you need to put a value, not arrogance, a value on your time and your worth. And a lot of you just haven't done it. As far as negotiating, I'd love to teach you privately and mentor you how to negotiate. So you've heard a couple of the sayings, whoever speaks the most loses. That's true and it's not because you also need to posture the guardrails of the conversation. So there's a whole conversation structure to negotiating of asking for what you want, never telling the story. Stories don't matter. And a lot of you women are used to telling the whole backstory. I say, so what, now what? What do you want to do about it? So let's move on and let's find solutions quickly. And women, I think the biggest thing that you want to put on your tool belt is becoming a problem solver. If you look at most of the things that I do during the day, I solve problems. I have problems that get dumped on me from my clients or whatever, the organization, what's ever happening, there's a situation. The faster you can get to solutions, the faster you are going to be a success. Love to help you. Again, go to asklaurel.com. If you have any questions, need a request, anything that I do, love to help. Talk to you tomorrow.